Hello and welcome or welcome back to Actually Let's Talk About It with me, your host Lily. And today, y'all, we will be reacting to the youth official music video making film featuring, of course, you know, and Mingyi. We're going to just see what went, in, what work went into making that amazing music video. Okay, what work? How did they do it? The choreography, the behind the scenes shenanigans. We're going to get into all of it relatively immediately but before we do we are going to have our moment of solidarity with the indigenous peoples all around the world and just let y'all know a little bit of what is going on y'all as you know as you know as you know in palestine and congo and sudan and yemen and in so many other places that i am still learning about now there has just been a overwhelming and I don't want to say injustice, but there's no other way to say it. An overwhelming injustice done against these indigenous people by Western powers and colonial powers. That's what I mean. And other people that would seek to exploit them further than what they've already been exploited or to massacre them further than what they've already been massacred. And it is downright disgusting, the situation in Palestine, not just in Gaza, which is horrendous enough from the aid trucks not being allowed in, how many aid the thousands of aid trucks that are still by the border of the Rafa crossing is downright inhumane the fact that this settler apartheid colony the government of that settler apartheid colony is not allowing these trucks to get into Gaza to give the aid there are literally children starving and children that have to wake up at 6 a.m to try to get food that the UN people are passing out, but when you have almost 2 million people who are displaced, who are all trying to scramble for food, that doesn't leave a lot of food left when you have like maybe a truck or two or even 20 trucks, it doesn't feed that many people. And so there's food insecurity, there's water insecurity, there are children who are so terrified by the bombings that are going on that they're literally having heart attacks. Children having heart attacks in Gaza. So that is what is going on, just a taste of what is going on. And I implore people to always follow the links that will be in the bio, whether it's on YouTube or Patreon, to just really get into what the heck is happening in Gaza and what is happening in the West Bank and what is happening in Palestine overall. Because it's inhumane, it is genocide. It is ethnic cleansing and there's no other way to say that. And then what's going on in the Congo is just as bad. It has been 500 years of genocide and ethnic cleansing of Congolese people by Western powers, colonial powers from the Belgian to the United States, to the British, to the French. Okay. Okay, let's be for real. Okay, we're calling everybody out. It's just been downright disgusting the amount of exploitation that has gone on in the Congo. The amount of exploitation that has become so normalized in the Congo that they literally will kill off very brilliant people who wanted to actually stop the exploitation of Congolese people like Patrice Lumumba, whose death anniversary of his assassination that was coordinated by my government, aka the U.S. government, and other colonial powers to put in a puppet person and a bunch of other puppet people after him to continue the exploitation of their own people. And he was the only one that wanted to show true change in the Congo and have Congolese people be in charge of the selling and the mass use and production of their resources. And they killed him for it. So when people say, why are there certain things that are happening in African nations? It is because of colonial destabilization. When righteous people were in power, they had them assassinated. And that is why in certain regions, there's not peace. Why certain regions are poor, even though they have all these resources because they're being stolen. So eyes on the Congo as well. And then, and also free Congo, just like free Palestine. And then we have what's going on in Sudan. We have what's going on in Sudan, being displaced in your own country. Girls and women, just like in the Congo, girls and women being assaulted. And y'all know what kind of assault I'm talking about. 
and it being normalized and it and then them being oppressed and displaced in their own country in Sudan because of the infighting that is being encouraged by world powers who have an interest in the region and are willing to allow again black and or indigenous or brown people to be put on the chopping blocks so you can have gold or so you can have lithium or you can have steel for these things in the ground that they view as more important than the people more important than the innocent bloodshed more important than the women more important than the children more important than the men these insignificant things that are in the ground it's insane to me and then we have what's happening in Yemen it's the amount of Western colonial interference in Yemen, which is why it's at the brink that it's at now in 2024. The strength of Yemenis, Yemeni people, the strength of them, the strength of them, and regardless of everything that they're going up against, the fact that the United Nations pulled funding from them because they were speaking up for Palestinians. It's insane to me. It's insane to me. And the fact that my country has the audacity to be bombing them, it is insane to me. And it will never be okay with me. And that's why we have to talk about it, because it is seriously, literally what my channel is called, actually, let's talk about it. And it was supposed to be a social commentary channel that actually became a reaction channel, because of course that's easier to do. But it will start to become a little bit of that going into this year, because I feel like Sometimes you just need the facts presented and I'm reading a lot of books to make sure I get the facts and the facts have helped me form these conclusions. The history has helped me form these conclusions and it's not okay. Like Martin Luther King Jr. said, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And the fact that we don't have more people who are upset about what's happening in these regions that are appalled, that are disgusted by what's happening in these regions that are discussed by their governments who are aiding and abetting what's happening in this, these regions. It's the reason why change is not always seen as fast as we would like, because enough people don't want to speak up. It's past the point of being silent. It's the past the point of, oh, I don't see that and I don't hear nothing. No, you do see it, you do hear, and you can't speak. Okay? And that's it and that's all. But yeah, y'all, we're going to get into this reaction. But before we do, we are going to give our patron shout outs to the lovely patrons on Patreon. So the first patron shout out will go out to Jen Obiva. The second patron shout out will go out to Clover Me. The third patron shout out will go out to Ayel. The fourth patron shout out will go out to Amethyst. The fifth patron shout out will go out to Lintu. And then the sixth patron shout out will go out to Shayaka. And I do want to thank you all so much for your support on the Patreon. It really does mean the world to me. And also a big shout out to the lovely subscribers on the YouTube channel. I want to thank y'all so much for doing what you do there. And also if you're watching this video on YouTube but you have yet to subscribe to the channel, do not forget to do so if you'd like to support the channel further. And y'all click the links in the bio if you want to know more about what's going on in the world. But y'all we're going to have our moment of brevity with this reaction here and looking at what is exactly going to be going on in the making of the youth official music video. So let's get into it. Oh, I love to see it. Two pretty best friends. I just really love to see it. You're ready for your next shoot. I'm done. Oh, they must have had to film in the early morning. And I know it was cold. If it was winter, oh, but he got a. They got a little. Okay, a little sheet to, for him to sit on. Okay. Mm. Mm. 
컷이랑 그리고 제 솔로 네, 이렇게 커트를 한번 찍었는데 생각보다 엄청 자연광에 와, 네, 네. 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 할수 있었던 촬영이 아니었나 어, 제가 그나마 공부증이 좀 없거든요 근데도 어, 날씨도 추운데 다리가 안 무서워요 아무튼 예쁘게 나온 것 같아서 기분이 좋았어요 다음 촬영지에서 또 보도록 하겠습니다 But for some reason that is how I go live 이거 봐 이거 Oh, he's. I love this director. He's like, give it to us, cause he was giving it. How cold is it in Korea? Cause they just be, they be the breaths. You could see it. Cause goodness. What is going on? It's winter. Winter is here. It's not like they be saying winter is coming. Winter is here. I love it. Talented. They both are. Okay. Yep. I love it. <laughs> he got it on his ears. I feel that. like a form of therapy right there. Uh, yeah. That was wonderful. Get on it. Go ahead, you know. Striving for perfection, even when it's already perfect. I love it. I like how they're listening to the artist's input as well, because it's very important. Just so you can have it from all angles, so you can put it in the music video at the best shot. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
뉴스 촬영 첫날에 <웃음> 오늘 마지막 수화했을 네, 때 저희가 또 이렇게 찍어봤는데 인기 넘겼어요. 어 굉장히 유노 씨의 그 아부르부가 섹시해가지고. I love it so much. 마지막 시즌이다. It's sort of much of the call for me. I love how Mindy never ceases to compliment Yuno. Because I feel like Yuno is the type of person that, like, they don't always seek out compliments, but they really do appreciate them when they're given. And I've noticed that in a couple of things that I've seen of AT's compilation videos. Or other things like that, where you know he's not the person that actively seeks out compliments, but when he gets them, he really appreciates them, and he really be getting shy about it. But at the same time, you could tell he really appreciates it, and he really likes to hear it from people who know him the best. And I'm like, he deserves his flowers, cause you know he do be giving them dances, and like he said, it is sexy, and it's like there's not. And I want people to realize that saying something that is sexy is not a bad thing to say. And it's not, it doesn't have to be anything, no inner window behind it or any kind of anything that's not platonic about it. It's just stating a fact. That's what it is. Okay, when a dance move is sexy, that's what it's going to give. It's sexy. Okay, okay. It's like, it's, it's, we're just saying things as they are. Okay. So I'm like, I love that Mingi and that men in general now. Especially younger men are really into like beating out toxic masculinity and giving compliments like that because you need to hear it. You need to hear it from people of the same gender. You need to hear it from people of different genders. You need to hear it from non-binary people. You need to hear it from everybody in your crew. And it's really important when it's somebody that you have known for a very long time giving you a compliment because it just lifts you up. Okay, it holds you down. Okay, okay, let me stop quoting Rihanna. Okay, <laughs> let's get into the lift me up lyrics a little bit. Let's get back to it though. I love this. Come on. I love it. That was real nice. Do it just happy dance. I love the editor so much. And that was just in the first day. Okay. Oh, the feel the rule. Okay. <laughs> Oh no, he says it's gonna be even colder there. The Twin Tower. Oh, I love that. I love it so. Wait, did he tell him not to do his business smile? Hold on. Oh, dang. Okay, not you know and Mindy's mom telling him about that business smile he be doing. Running in the cold is a different type of um, athleticism there. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh, this is cute. <laughs> Come on now. Oh, he adjusted it for him so he could see. Okay, the gift of a friend. Oh, oh. Get into a child. 
the sheer nature of the surroundings that I think like, that's beautiful. So, reminds me of myself, ain't gonna lie. I love that. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, so that's how they filmed it. I thought they was on the ground. Ooh. They are so adorable. I love it. Come on. That's why it was so in sync. Okay. And BB Shrippin ain't never missing a beat. That's all I'm saying. So cool. I love it. I love it. Hmm. I'm done. I love it. They is a nut together. I can't even. <laughs> oh, I wanted to see how this was filmed too. We did. We sure did, sir. The Twin Towers. I love that they call themselves that because they're really tall. I wonder if he really got to hit the glass. I want to know. 
Okay. I love it. He said this one is nice. I love it. He said I think my face looks good on this. I love that. Okay, so they filmed this one in two days. So every music video thus far has taken two days to film. Oh, that's beautiful. Get into it. Oh, I love that. And it's the fact that he made this song when he was on his hiatus. Okay, that like adds an extra depth to it that a lot of people were not expecting. I was not expecting that. I was like, oh wow, that, that's, that's, okay. I'm like, okay. I'm like, okay. I'm like, okay. It's just, it's something else when you find out certain things about songs that you really love. I was like, I was wondering why the youth, it just spoke to me even before I, like, even when I was reacting to it, because it was the first time I reacted to it was when I did the album listen reaction but even just hearing it even without looking at the lyrics you can feel exactly what he's talking about and what you know is singing about as well on the song i'm like deep 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 youth is such a i don't want to say it's a tumultuous time but it is it is a really eye-opening time about yourself about the world around you and what is very odd about the things that I've noticed in society as a person who believed things were a certain way up until the time I was like from the time of 18 to 20 is where you really have the shattering of what you thought life was like as an adult versus what it actually is and I believe that the way that you're taught in society about what it means to be an adult is not the easiest thing to live up to a lot of times. I think a lot of times we are taught to internalize things or prioritize things that don't really matter as mattering the most in our lives when that's not usually what makes people happy. And I feel like that can really hinder you as a young person. And also the fact that we're not always taught the necessary skills that you would need to be an adult in this world, especially from what I've experience growing up in the west specifically in the states the united states it's like they teach you from 5 to 18 or 5 to grade 12 i should say because some people graduate before that time so from kindergarten to grade 12 or from 12th grade however you want to call it they really don't teach you anything outside of getting into a schedule of being a worker because if you notice from when you're in preschool or when you're in kindergarten are wearing the earlier years of elementary, how your days aren't as long, but as you get into the latter years of elementary, middle school, and high school, you figure out that you have pretty much eight hour days. And what is also eight hours? A shift that you would work at work. So we're in this assimilation of being programmed to work without giving the tools in which how to get jobs. You know what I'm saying? And how we're just taught subjects that sometimes we don't need in real life yes you do need to know history yes you should know geography because you should know where you at and where other things are relative to you you should know that you should know basic arithmetic aka algebra you should know that much you should know geometry a little bit you should know some algebra too some pre-cal maybe sometimes you need it um but other things that they don't teach home ec anymore that's not a class that was ever offered they don't teach um, sex education. I believe the only sex education class I had was literally in fourth grade. And they didn't really go in depth. It was a video that we watched for the girls and they had the girls and guys in separate rooms and they just vaguely explained things. 
and they talked about the menstrual cycle and then we got to watch the boys video and we thought that that was such a big deal and they talked about what guys go through let's say are hitting puberty but it didn't go outside of that and even in middle school it wasn't really talked about at all about the care that you need to have and stds and stis and different things like that it wasn't talked about the way it should when we're really here for most of our day we're in school and those type of things weren't taught and so i'm like if you don't have that foundation if you aren't getting that type of learning at home where else are you going to find it other than online and through other means that are not necessarily the best avenues for that and so it's kind of like not setting up the youth to fail but in a way it's a failure of the generations before us to really put what needs to be put in the curriculum for kids teenagers or kids preteens and teenagers to be proper adults into their learning at school i feel like having classes about finances and how to manage your money would be very essential to when you are just thrust as an adult because some people when they hit 18 their parents kick them out i don't know why people do that to their kids but some people's parents as soon as they hit 18 as soon as they graduate in june of that year they're kicked out by july august and they have to literally figure it out from there and so there's things like that that you have to realize as well and then also i believe having a support system to where if you decide when you're in your 20s that you don't want to do this anymore and you want to quit your job quit that job quit that job quit that job if it means your mental health quit that job don't feel bad about quitting that job move back in with your parents if you moved out and figure it out from there because it really is not worth overworking yourself. We hear these stories all the time of people in this country, in the States, overworking themselves to death mm -hmm. because they have neglected their mental health to where their body just shuts down. It just gives out. And they're in their 30s, 40s, 50s. They're not that old, but they are, they are passing away because they are overexerting themselves. They are not taking care of themselves and their body is so tired. It's so worn down. It's so wore out that they just can't keep going anymore. And I'm like, you got to think about things like that. You got to think about things like that. And I'm glad that there's this song out to where you really understand that our experiences are really the same, even though we come from all backgrounds. And what has probably been one of the hardest things for me to learn is to ask for help because as Black people, specifically African-American people, The topics of mental health is something that is so still that is still so very new. It was not discussed growing up. That was not something that was discussed at all, at all, at all, at all. And I mean, and it was it was something that was very difficult for me going into my teenage years. Like it wasn't something that was easy and I don't know why it wasn't easy. I can't really put into words why it wasn't easy but that the years of 15 16 17 were some of the hardest years for me in life and i can't really put into words why that necessarily was but i just know that it it just was what it was you know what i'm saying yeah and i can't really explain why but it was and so and back then because we had grew up very Christian, like I have mentioned that. And up from the time I was a child to the time I was around 20 something, I had been in the church and I just did, there was just not a space to talk about some of the things that I was feeling in a productive way with my mom at the time. So it was just something that I just kept to myself. And even I talked about it now with her and my sister would had similar things going on as well around that time and it was you know it was things going on it was depressive things it was suicidal things and it is a part of growing up at times even when there's nothing that has been traumatic that has happened to you there doesn't necessarily need to be and i'm just like that part there's not necessarily something that needs to be traumatic that happened to your life for those type of things to come up and so it is just very important to remember because i'm like i like to overthink things so 
that I think that was my saving grace during that period. I was such an overthinker that I'm like, I was thinking of all these random scenarios. I'm like, okay, like this, it just like this would not work out. This would not do this. And then I was thinking of the financial responsibility that would be at my mom and my sister's feet if I was to ever go through with this. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want them to do that. I don't want one of them to like find me in this position. And I would just be really sad. So that's why it didn't like go further than that. And so being far removed, like over a decade removed from that time, it just really put a lot of perspective. Like I think in watching um, Agassiz's um, Amygdala um, music video, that was that was like looking in a mirror. Um, it was like, and that's why I can't watch that music video. I watched it once for the reaction and I can't really watch it again. It was that triggering for me. Cause I'm like, that was like looking into a mirror of those years. And it's not a time that you're proud of to have happened, but it's a time that you needed to help you grow and to learn things about yourself that you didn't really know before. But it's just not a time that was a good time for me in terms of that mental state. There was, of course, you know, great moments in that time, but that mental state was not where it was at. It was not good. Um, so that is also a struggle of youth as well. And being able to have a safe space and resources to really express that you're not okay. Because like people say it's okay not to be okay, but it's not okay to not ask for help. That, <laughs> that part, like you cannot not ask for help. You can never feel like you're going to be a burden to somebody. Be that burden. Be that burden because people that love you would rather you tell them what's going on with you than you never say anything and they lose you. They wouldn't want that alternative. That That's for real. And, you know, and it's just it's something that we have to remember. Youth comes with a lot of responsibility. It comes with a lot of stress. It comes with a lot of, it can come with a lot of insecurity as well. And you have to... Always make sure that you are putting yourself first in everything. If that means quitting that job, if that means dropping out of school, if that means just cutting off everybody who is toxic in your life and just going back to basics, then that's what it means. That's what you need to do because you have to keep yourself sane. You have to keep yourself centered. You have to say, keep yourself grounded. And it's so very important to prioritize yourself. And I feel like youth really says that. Because you shouldn't feel like you're a burden. You shouldn't feel like you're not measuring up. And a lot of times we can compare ourselves, especially coming from BIPOC backgrounds, if you are Black, Indigenous, or another person of color. People tend to, we tend to do that. And I don't know like why that's a thing, but it's kind of traditionalist values mixed with a bunch of other factors, external and internal. And it becomes a thing to where we think that, oh, we're going to be a burden if we ask for help. And we have to really deprogram ourselves with that because we come from cultures that are rooted in community. We can't be a burden to the people that are community. That's just not possible because it goes against the whole idea of community in the first place. And which is to help out one another when you just really can't just do it by yourself. And it's important to always remember that the people that love you, the people that are for you, they don't consider you asking for help, asking for a helping hand leaning on them for a moment or for a while to be a burden because they would rather have you do that than any alternative where you're not there at all. Okay. And you know what I mean. Okay. So yeah, just like remember that. And I'm like, and I, I kind of started rambling at the end, but it's really important to remember how crucial this time is and that growing pains are sometimes a part of life. And you have to remember that you're not, in any way, shape, or form in your 20s, or even in your 30s, or even in your 40s, or even in your 50s, your 60s, your 70s, your 80s, your 90s, you are never too old to be doing something, or you are never, it's never going to be too late for you. The only time it's too late is when you're in the ground. That's when it's too late, when you won't. Until then, it is never too late. You're not behind, you are where you're supposed to be. Because you're not going to be like your friends. You're not going to be like your family members. You're not going to be like your parents. You're not going to be like your grandparents. You're not going to be like your great grandparents. Because we're all different people. And we all have our different way of growth in us that's different. And we can't try to compare it to people 
that were around, people that were related to, because again, they're still not us. Our DNA is unique to us. And it might be uh, similarities with the people that you're related to, but it's still unique to you. Nobody can be you in this world but you. And nobody can do what you do in life but you. And you got to always remember that. That is your, you move at your own pace. It doesn't matter what society is saying you should be doing at this age and that age. Society is wrong 99.9% .9 of the time. Okay, society puts unrealistic expectations on us. 99.9% .9 of the time. And we have to remember that we control our lives. We control what we do. And we move at our own pace. And in the perfect timing is when we'll do things. And not a moment sooner. And that's it and that's all. If you quit your job or you dropped out of school, trust and believe that it's for the your betterment. It's for your betterment. Okay, it's for your betterment. It's for your betterment. There are better things for you. When one door closes, a better one opens. So trust that that door is about to open. It may not happen now, may not happen tomorrow, but it's going to happen. And you got to trust that it is going to happen for you. And that's it and that's all. And that's the end of my motivational TED Talk because, um, yeah, it's getting up. This video is long, okay? But yeah, I had to do my little ramblings to get to some type of a conclusion. And we got there. Mission accomplished. But yes, y'all, if y'all stayed all the way to the end of my ramblings and my reaction, then I want to thank y'all so much for watching. If you're watching this video on YouTube and you're a subscriber on the channel, I want to thank you once again for being a subscriber. If you're watching this video on YouTube and you have yet to subscribe to the channel, do not forget to do so if you'd like to support the channel further. And last but most definitely not least, once again, thank you so much to all the lovely patrons on Patreon, okay, both the free and the paid members. Y'all, I see you, okay, and I appreciate y'all. And I will be back with more 80s reactions relatively soon. But until then, y'all, bye.